both the House and the Senate have laid out their respective budget plans as the legislature begins work on an eventual agreement for the state's next two-year budget. Senate Finance Chair Julie Rosen joined me this week to talk about the Republican-led Senate's budget plan. Senate leaders like yourself have repeatedly stated your opposition to any tax increases due to the projected $1.6 billion surplus as well as the $2.6 billion the state is expecting to receive from the feds. Um, which areas of the state budget need the greatest attention? Well, you could ask every chair of that division and they would say that their area is the most important. <laughs> of course, our priority is protecting the vulnerable, our children, making sure education is a priority. Um, the aging is always a priority. We did put a particular amount, a large amount of money into infrastructure. We think that's a focus that needs to happen. And then there's always little pieces of public safety. I mean, I don't mean that as little, but that's a, a focus, making sure that we, we provide the protection and we have um, that a stable ongoing uh, support there. The broadband's an issue, always important, but I think really our education system is a priority also. And um, I'll get to education in just a minute, but let's let's talk about three things that were carved out in, in sort of the announcement of the Republican budget plan. Um, spending increases in transportation, jobs and economic development for COVID-19 recovery, and then you mentioned this already, broadband expansion. Why are these three in particular important? Well, it moves the state forward, and I think it's best for the state. And I did previously to forget about job creation and improving the economy. That is probably number one. I mean, making sure that we get people back to work and we improve our economy and, um, and, and, and create a, a sustainable Minnesota going forward. So, and that does not include any tax increases, a sustainable Minnesota. I think that would be extremely detrimental to the momentum that we have going forward. So we, we did focus on infrastructure. That's important. There's been a deficit in that area. Let's get that going that everybody can agree on that. And, uh, and of course, then the children are, are always a priority. And speaking of children, education is a big priority for your caucus. Um, school kids have faced some enormous challenges. School districts have faced enormous challenges with the pandemic. What are some of the specific goals and how will they be funded? Because critics are saying that the Republican plan isn't putting enough money into the budget for education, though I believe you are funding it at the level of the February forecast. But the House plan is calling for a lot more. So can you talk a little bit about you know, why the number that you've settled on in terms of funding education? Well, we did have to fit within our targets, within our budget. And I think that's appropriate. We have giving, been giving a per pupil increase ongoing every, every budget year. Um, and there is a lot of moving parts, especially from the dollars coming from the federal government. So we wanted to make sure that we maintain that maintenance of effort going forward. And it is a starting point dealing with the house but um, we have to deal with getting our kids back in school, number one, and making sure that they are adequately uh, taught and have the resources. Summer school is important, but um, there's so many little problems in that area that we need to address. And I just don't think throwing money and not making sure that we know exactly where it goes is a very good idea either. So we wanted to make sure we support it, but it is an ongoing discussion. The Senate has already passed legislation that would prevent Paycheck Protection Program forgivable loans and the federal unemployment stipends uh, received by Minnesotans who were unemployed from being taxed at the state level. It appears that the governor and the House agree with that, but only to a point. They want to cap the um, tax benefit on, on that relief money. Is there room for a compromise there? Well, there's certainly always a room for a compromise. I get, again, though, I think they are penalizing the large employers who probably didn't even take the PPP. So, you know, that is a discussion going forward. I'm very disappointed, though, that they haven't done it so far, that they haven't passed this. It's important to get this out and done. We need to start getting some of these large issues negotiated and out the door. Um, the Senate has also proposed a 5% reduction in state agency budgets. Why are reductions a good idea? Well, I think they're a good idea because it forces the agency to really take a look at their budget, like everybody else has taken a look at their budget this last year with COVID and the way people are doing business and 
do we really need to, to have that extra building? Can you relook at your lease? Uh, can you look at how people are going to be coming back to work or are they gonna stay working from home? What does that mean? I know there's some cost savings there. It, it, and that 5% reduction is just on operating expenses and administration. So it's not across the board through the whole agency. Um, it, it really does force that agency to really take a look at their expenses. Um, as chair of the finance committee, I presumably you had a role in setting the, the budget targets for the budget planning. And all of these bills are gonna come before your committee, that's their final stop, before they go to the Senate floor. How did you and other leadership um, decide on the targets knowing that we're still dealing with the pandemic and it could still take time before the state returns to a state of so-called normalcy. Now, Shannon, that's the problem. This has been very, very much like any other budget year that I've been through because of that looming federal funds that has been out there. And then you set the target, the federal funds land. It's gotten very complicated as far as how much money to put in an area, not knowing what the guidelines are, which should be coming from the federal government maybe the end of April. So we've already we've already hit all of our deadlines. We've already got these budget bills coming to finance committee as of tonight actually. And and then all of a sudden you have this this extra layer of massive federal funding. 2.577 billion dollars is still up um, can be negotiated by the state. So the, the priorities again have been very simple. We are not raising taxes. We want to create a healthy um, job economy for the state of Minnesota. We want to protect our kids. We want to invest in infrastructure. And what does that mean? Infrastructure to me is broadband, is transportation, roads and bridges, um, and protect our state assets too, ongoing. You've been consistently concerned that the legislature is being left out of the decision-making process when it comes to these federal stimulus payments. Will you continue to push for legislative oversight? Oh yes, we will continue. That is very much a priority. And I, I would be hard pressed to find a legislator out there that doesn't want to have a say in how those funds are spent. And the Senate will be rolling out their own um, you know, package of what that 2.577 billion should be focused on, what the priorities are. And I think it's a very good, reasonable, very, very good package. I'd just like to be included in those discussions. Um, the Senate does feel like it's a, a one man show and um, it's unfortunate because we represent the entire state too. Well, and how challenging is it then to have this enormous one-time money fund as opposed to trying to craft an ongoing two-year budget. Is it hard to separate those two things in terms of ongoing spending and then this one-time spending? Oh, absolutely. And what makes it even more difficult is that there's, you don't want to that, that one-time money to create um, more confusion on ongoing funding in the future. Like create a new program that's gonna need um, a new general fund money to keep it going. That's absolutely not what we want. We don't want to keep growing government. Our budget is, 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 is pretty plump as it is. And uh, so we have to make sure that we utilize those federal funds to the best of the ability to fill in the, the gaps, but not make it ongoing commitment. Senate Finance Chair Julie Rosen, thank you for your time today. Thank you so much, Shannon, for this opportunity too. I really appreciate it. Thank you.